Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. In this video we're going to take a look at MetaMask. MetaMask is a super popular crypto wallet that can be used to access all the different apps that Ethereum has to offer. In this video we're going to take a look at how you install it and what the possible issues are and how to protect yourself. If you like the sound of that, do not hesitate to click that like button and don't forget to subscribe at the end of the video. If you're already using MetaMask, then you can simply skip the introduction, use the timestamps in the description below and jump to the privacy and security risks. So the first thing you do is go to metamask.io. It is very important that you go to the correct website. Don't just type it into Google because scammers are actually putting paid ads and trying to get people to a fake website and then scam people. So please be careful. Go to metamask.io directly and then click download. As you can see, it is available on different platforms. You have a Chrome extension. You also have an app for both iOS and Android. Personally, I do not recommend using the, uh, the mobile apps since you use your phone for a thousand things. It is much safer to use a different device for all your crypto needs. Either way, we're gonna use the Chrome extension in this case, since Chrome is the most popular browser, but you have also the choice to use Firefox, Brave or Edge. So next you click install MetaMask for Chrome. So the first thing you do is check how many users it has, how many reviews it has. So in this case, 2 million sounds legit, uh, 1,800 reviews. You can double check the reviews if you want to see if you have a lot of bad reviews. Um, so in this case, you will notice they have some people saying that their Ethereum got lost. These are people that got scammed um, by clicking on an ad and then seeing a fake MetaMask website. So it really happens. It is not a fake story. It happens, so be careful. So in this case, we're going to click Add to Chrome. And then we get a important notification. And that is something that you really have to keep in mind. It says, MetaMask can read and change all your data on websites you visit. It can display notifications, fine. And it can modify data you copy paste. So it's a big one as well. So then we click add extension. So the next thing we see is it asks if you're new to MetaMask or if you already have one so you can import a wallet or you can make a new one. So in this case, we're going to make a new one. So click create a wallet. Then they give you some important warnings. Then we say agree. And then they're going to ask you a password. Then we get the secret backup phrase. I would recommend that you save these words immediately. These words will give you access even when the browser plugin gets deinstalled. This way you can always reinstall it and get access to your crypto. If somebody ever asks these keys, <laughs> then you know that something is wrong. These keys are holy. All right, everything is installed and you're good to go. We'll now quickly take a look at, for example, Uniswap and see how we can use Uniswap. Once we arrive on the Uniswap website, we click connect to a wallet. We say MetaMask. And then we have to say that we approve Uniswap to get access to our wallet. So we click next. And we say connect. And we're good to go. Now, whatever you do on the Ethereum net, you will need Ethereum on your wallet. So you have to buy some Ethereum on an exchange, for example, Binance, Kraken or whatever. Then click withdraw and send it over to your wallet address. Where can you find your wallet address? Well, very simple. Click on extensions. Click on MetaMask. And then you click here, copy to clipboard. This will copy your address and that will be your public address. When you go to your exchange, you can say withdraw and then withdraw to this address. As always, I recommend only sending a very small amount. See if it works, see if it arrives. So once you transferred your coins to your wallet, you can start using Uniswap and other apps on the Ethereum network. So always once you're done using an app, I propose that you click that lock button. This way, nothing or no one can have access to your wallets. So let's dive into the security issues. First of all, MetaMask is a hot wallet. It's not as safe as a hardware wallet, for example. The keys are not being stored on a server, so that's good news. They're being stored in your browser. Um, so you have to make sure that you keep your PC safe. So if somebody would hack your PC and they would manage to get your password, then they have access to your crypto. 
That's why I would like to say, see the MetaMask wallet as your personal wallet. You will not walk across the street with $10,000 in your wallet. I think maximum 500, maybe $1,000 in your wallet. Um, you should act the same with your MetaMask wallet. Second of all, all websites can detect if you have a browser plugin. So in this case, different websites can detect if you're using MetaMask. This also means if you have different tabs open and you don't know exactly which page you're interacting with, a fake website could, for example, create a pop-up where you think this is the MetaMask wallet asking you for something and then try to get your keys, try to get your passwords and so forth. So the best suggestion is if you're using MetaMask, only have one tab open and this way really keep an eye on what you're doing and what is popping up. When in doubt, just close the browser, open the website again and try again. If you really want to add extra security, then you can have the combination of a hardware wallet and the MetaMask wallet. For example, Ledger can connect with the MetaMask wallet. It's already integrated. This means that the keys stay on your Ledger. So they're not in your browser, they stay on your Ledger wallet. This also means each time you wanna do a transaction, you'll have to sign off with your Ledger. So it's a little less convenient, but a lot safer. So we click on extensions, we click on MetaMask, then we click here, and we say connect hardware wallet. Now we say Ledger or Trezor, depending on what you have, and we follow these steps. Next thing we need to talk about is privacy. When you go to the website, you click Privacy Policy, then you see that these policies apply both to the website and the mobile application. But we then scroll down, we see some general information about Google and so forth. This is normal um, if they have Google Analytics installed. Uh, this is not a big surprise. Then they will share data that they have on you um, to comply with the law, which I understand. If you leave them your email, they want to communicate with you. But if you dive in a little bit further, then we see sharing of personal information. So they say we do not share or sell personal information, but they have a few exceptions. Affiliates, we may disclose your personal information to our subsidiaries and corporate affiliates. Business transfers, this is basically if they would ever sell MetaMask to another company that they can transfer everything that's included, also the data about you. This one, of course, is no problem, compliance with the law. And this last one might be a little bit of a concern. We may also share aggregated and or anonymized data with others for their own uses. So yeah, as most platforms like social media platforms and so forth, this is a very open privacy statement that allows them to do a lot. And if you then know that the browser plugin has access to all the data on all the different websites, they are able to collect a whole lot of data on you. So if you're not comfortable with this, um, then you might want to look at a different solution. I think all the different wallets like an Exodus and so forth have similar privacy issues in that concern, but at least now you know what you're getting into. All right, if you wanna know even more about MetaMask, if you wanna have some good tips on how you have more control over your transactions, how you can change your gas fees and so forth, be sure to check out the video of box mining. I'll put a link in the description of this video and you'll also have a link popping up in the top right corner of this video. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. If you made it all the way to the end, then I'm sure that you think it's a good video. Don't forget to like, post a comment. If you have any questions, also do not hesitate. I'll reply to all the different comments and then uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.